You may remember the video I made a few moons back when I replaced all my fluorescence lights here in the garage with LED lights. And these ones were the Osram LED 16 watts and they are called Osram Substitute. And they're also coming with this um, starter-like accessory here in the pack. So this is a direct replacement of the fluorescence lights. So you don't need to change anything, you can do it yourself. Very easy to do. And some of you have asked if I don't want to take out the inductive ballast, which is always in these fluorescence lights. And well, I didn't really bother to take this out because the LEDs I bought from Osram, they were just pure replacements. So you have to replace the starter as well as the light tube. Well, I don't really know if it's worth doing it, but hey, that's why we are here on the channel from the off-grid garage, right? To find out. So I found this really old fluorescence light here in the garage still. <laughs> My wife calls it the off-grid messy garage because it's really hard for me to get rid of things. You never know when you need them. So with this light, you know, probably took this off years ago somewhere at the house, in the house. I can't remember where this light is actually from. And I kept it for whatever reason. And now it's coming in handy. We've got our light tube here and the starter. And the starter here, just a normal star. Oh, well, actually, this light fixture here may have come with the Endeavour and Captain Cook. Well, it must have. It says here, made in Great Britain. It's probably that old. So we've got our three pole screw terminal here with our active and neutral and the earth or ground is directly connected to the chassis here. See there's this little fin that goes directly into the screw terminal. And this is where you connect your 240 volts. And now it is basically just a series connection of all the components inside. See the active goes all the way to one of the sockets on one side. There's the heating element inside the fluorescent slide. Goes through the other cable the brown one to the starter and from there it goes all the way to the other side goes to this socket here and then the other blue one comes back and goes into the ballast and from there the brown one goes back as our neutral it's a serious connection of all components and now if you have a look at the osram led replacement tube we can see it says install this side neutral l for face or active and this is where the silver sticker is. On the other side, there's nothing. There's nothing here. So I put my multimeter on continuous test here. This is the dead end of our LED light tube. And I just measure these two contacts. There's just a piece of wire across these two pins here. Nothing else. And as I said before, all these components are all in a serious connection. And if we wouldn't have any connection between these two pins here, well, the whole thing wouldn't work, right? So in theory, the whole LED light tube should just work if we connect this to active and neutral on this side where the sticker is. And nothing on the other end. One pin here and the other pin there. So what I have done now, I've connected the neutral and active via crocodile clamps to our power cable. And this is just a normal power cable here with a normal uh, 240 volt plug where I have cut off the other end. And we will plug this one into a power point now and see what happens. So in theory, the light should just turn on without anything connected on the other side. Just making sure there is no short in between. And I also have a portable RCD for these tests always. Okay, I step back a little bit and I turn this one on and let's see what happens here. It turns on. Look at this. There's nothing connected on the other end. It is just a pure LED light bulb powered from this side where the sticker is. 240 volt here on these ends. Okay, we turn this off. Disconnect this all safely again. So this means we would only need to power this light tube from one side. We don't need any of this stuff here inside, right? Apart from a connection from this terminal here to one of the sockets on either side. But before we are going to strip all the unnecessary parts out of this fluorescence light here, 
I want to do some testing and measurement and see how much would we actually save if we disconnect the ballast and all the other stuff here. So to test this correctly, I would need the LED starter, whatever that is, here. I don't think there's actually anything in there but a little fuse or something, I heard. See, it says for LED use, there might be not even a fuse in there, I think it's just a wire. I can peek through this little hole there and can see a wire inside connecting these two pins. That is probably all. Okay, let's put this LED starter here in the socket. Okay, I have now just normally connected our 240 volt cable here to the terminals of the fluorescent light. I have replaced the starter with the LED starter. And now we just do another test and plug this one all in. And it would work, of course. 16.3 watts. We have this is including this is including all the cabling the ballast the fuse starter led situation in there and everything else this is like the standard socket fluorescent light as you would have it at home it may go a little bit down once the leds are heating up okay 16.2 all right just to confirm this again here the led tube is supposed to have 16 watts actually Okay, and here's our modification of the fluorescent light. I've got the incoming neutral, ground and active. So in the neutral and active are going now only to one side of the light fixture into this socket here. Everything else is stripped out. So the only thing we need to think about is now that only one side of the light fixture is active now. The other side is completely dead. And you want to make sure the one with the sticker with the N and L writing on it goes to your active side. The problem here now is if you do it the other way around, you will make a short. Because remember when we measured the dead side of the LED tube, we could measure a continuous connection between these two pins. So there's a piece of wire inside. And if you connect this one to our active side of the light, you will just make a dead short. And uh, to prevent this, we are going to make a little modification to the actual light tube now. Uh, to be honest, I think we have fixed it already. Yeah, I can see the wire inside and it's broken from our drill bit. So there's no continuity now anymore between these two pins. So just in case I would put the light tube the wrong way around into our socket now, nothing will happen because there's no, there's no connection between these two pins anymore. It will work only in one direction. And it works again. So let's see how much we have saved. 15.8. That is 0 0.4 watts. So this is 0 0.4 watts less than with the inductive ballast. So 0 0.4 watts is 0 
0.0004 kilowatts times one hour per day times 365 days would make 0.146 kilowatt hours per year. If I multiply this by 21 cents we are paying here per kilowatt hour, that would save me 3 cents per year. It takes me probably 20 minutes per light. And I've got 3 in here, so that's 1 hour. And I'm saving 3 cents a year. Nah. It's not going to be worth it, really. <laughs> so the reason we are not saving much energy by taking out the inductive ballast here is the current going through this light is so small, there's almost no loss inside the ballast here. So it depends a bit how long you have your lights on per day. But here in the garage, I would say that's probably an hour on average a day. So, of course, it totally depends on your circumstances and your usage pattern of these lights. If they are running for 12 hours a day, it, it may be actually worth taking the inductive ballast out. And then over the lifetime of a human, you will probably save 40 or 50 cents. And it also depends what kind of LED tubes you are buying. These ones from Osram, they come with this little starter. They come with this little starter replacement thingy here as well. Sometimes you can buy these LED tubes here without this starter. And then you have to take out the inductive ballast and all the cabling as well to make it actually work. But these Osram ones here, total one-to-one -one replacement for existing ones. I'm not going to bother taking out the inductive loads here for three cents a year. So guys, so far this video from today, I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something and it helped you in making a decision if you want to take out your inductive ballast or not. I definitely leave it in there for three cents a year. That is crazy, right? As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support and all your donations here on the channel. And until the next video here on the channel, stay charged and stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. The tube doesn't turn on anymore because I drilled this hole here on the end and destroyed the wire inside. just took the LED starter apart and there's really only a piece of wire in there. No fuse, just a piece of wire. Makes sense.